Hello, hello, it's nice to make your acquaintance. My name is Tunde and I just wanted to talk to you about this problem right here. This is my Xbox and it's having a tantrum and saying no thank you and it doesn't want to work anymore. Now you may have had the displeasure of seeing this something went wrong screen as well and I feel your pain, it sucks. What's worse, it doesn't even tell you what exactly has gone wrong, you just know it's bad. Now at the bottom, you'll see it says this is an E105 error. There are other ones too that happen in the same way, with the same screen, 102, 106, 203, 302 and a few others, but they all leave you in the same spot not playing games. But good news, I'm going to show you two ways to fix it and I haven't really seen people talking about these much online. The real problem, ladies and gentlemen, is this thing. This connector connects the hard drive to your Xbox internally, and part of it can fail, leaving you in, well, a bad situation. The easiest fix is to just replace it with a known working one, and that works. But there's another way too. Now I'll explain more in depth, but I'll start with some background. If you want to skip straight to the fixes, they are here. So when the issues first started for me, I had problems syncing game saves and game downloads would fail from time to time, even though I had plenty of space on the drive. Then it progressed to random crashes and then this, the wonderful green screen of death. Then I'd try to reboot and I'd get the E105 error. The troubleshooting screen suggested I do a reset or an offline system update, but they would fail either immediately or partway through with a similar error code. Most of these error codes are the console's way of complaining about problems communicating with the internal hard drive. Most, but not E100, E100. That one's different and is related to problems communicating with the optical Blu-ray drive during a firmware update, not the hard drive, so that's not applicable here. When it gets really bad, you might be greeted with just a blank screen, nothing at all. And your TV will say no signal detected or something along those lines. Most of the time people assume it's because the HDMI port's gone dodgy, but actually quite often it's just a problem with the hard drive. If the console can't read the drive at all during startup, it gives up completely and won't even try to output anything over HDMI. The light will be on, but it'll just sit there, staring at you, silently judging all your life choices. Now I've had these problems before, and after looking around on the internet the first time, I thought the problem was due to bad sectors on the hard drive, so I replaced it, hoping that that would solve the problem. While I was at it, I thought I'd upgrade to an SSD to improve load times, because why not? Opportunity and all that. That helped for a while, but the problems came back pretty quickly, because as I said before, the real problem is this thing. It's the data and power connector for the console's internal hard drive. The hard drive plugs into it, and it's how the console and hard drive talk to each other. I don't know if it's a quality thing, or maybe it's worn down over time because of heat. Maybe I just received a dud, but the data part on these things can fail. There are two methods you can use for this fix. The first is to replace the connector. It's the easier method. Replace it with a working one and the console will spring back to life. Bear in mind that this method requires you to be able to obtain a known working and reliable, it's very important, replacement connector. Instructions are here. If you're not sure about the quality of replacements or if they're too expensive, you can use the second method. Method two is more involved, but rather than replacing the faulty connector, you can reuse it with some cheap PC parts to bypass the data connection. We can ignore the data connection on the faulty cable and use our own more reliable one instead. Instructions for this method are here. Stop. Disclaimer time. These methods both involve opening up the console. In order to do that, you need to remove the warranty stickers. As such, this process will void your warranty if you still have one. If your console is still in the warranty period, do not do this. Instead, send your console back to Microsoft and they'll send you a free replacement. If your console is out of warranty, however, this can save you the hassle of sending it to a third party for repair or buying a replacement console. I'm using an Xbox One X here, but the same principle applies to all versions of the console, so the original Xbox One and the Xbox One S as well. And please excuse my desk, it's definitely seen better days. And with that loveliness out of the way, we can talk about disassembly. Whichever method you're using, you're going to need to take the console apart to get at the hard drive and its connector. Since I don't have all three models of Xbox One to show you how to take them apart, and since a channel called XFix already has some very helpful disassembly guides, they're the same ones I used, I'll link those in the description. XFix also has guides on how to format a new drive and prepare it for use in an Xbox One. If the drive you're using came from an Xbox One, any console doesn't have to be this one, you shouldn't need to partition or format anything. 
In fact, as long as you haven't tried to restore the console to factory settings and the dodgy data cable hasn't corrupted the files, all your downloads, saved games and profiles should still be there. If your drive is super corrupt or you've tried to reset to factory settings, you may need to do an offline system update after completing this and start fresh. I've included a link on how to do that in the description too. Take the old one out and put the new one in. Pretty simple. Now three versions of this cable exist. Which one you use depends on the model of your Xbox One. I got these prices from a quick Google search and I'll put the links to non-eBay items in the description. It's just a case of taking the drive out, removing the protective caddy, swapping the connector over and putting it all back together again. Just be careful when handling wires, especially when putting in the new connector, as they can be fragile. Now with the old connector out and the new one in, we're going to try to turn the console back on. Before it was throwing up error messages and now hopefully it won't be doing that anymore. Getting to the boot up animation is great, but this green screen takes ages to get past and it could just sit here forever with the green screen of death. All we can do is wait with lots of tension and stress and worry and stuff. Awesome, now let's try a game. Okay, brilliant, so it looks like this is working. I'm gonna try and load into a level as well just to get everything up and running and make sure it's working properly. But while I'm doing that, one thing I would recommend is that once you get this thing working again, in order to just test and see if everything's going well, um, just try and download as much stuff or copy over as much stuff as you can in order to fill the console's hard drive all the way up to the top, just completely max it out. And then if any of the downloads or copying fails during that, then your hard drive is still not quite reliable. But if you get to that and you're still good, then you're pretty much sorted. Method two is slightly more complicated and involves bypassing the faulty data connection. For this you'll need your drive and the faulty data cable, the one that's not working anymore, a SATA cable and a SATA power extension cable. This one's open because it came as a 3-pack. The internal drive for an Xbox, and actually most consoles, is connected using the same exact connections as the hard drive or SSD in your computer, with this part being for power and this part for data. The only difference between this and what would be used in a PC is the end of the cable that provides power to the drive from the console. This end is proprietary, so to my knowledge, isn't widely available. If anyone knows what this end of the cable is called, and if you can get a version that has this on one end and regular SATA power on the other, please let me know in the comments because that would be extremely helpful. If we had that, we could replace the original Xbox One connector entirely and save some space. But because we don't have something like that, what we'll do is use the original cable for its power connector and bypass the original data connection so that we can use our own, more reliable data cable instead. This is a SATA data cable. SATA data cables are used to connect some of the internal components in PCs and in consoles. They also use it for the Blu-ray drive. And you can get them cheap. This cheap. 
I had a few lying around from the last time I built a computer because they tend to include way more of these than you really need with the motherboards. If you're going to buy one especially for this, I suggest getting the shortest cable you can find. This is so you don't have to stuff too much cabling in the case and that will keep air circulation inside the console as free as possible and prevent overheating after you close it back up. Again, links for the types of cables you want are in the description. You can get flat SATA cables or rounded ones, your choice. The flat ones tend to be cheaper and the round ones give less obstruction to airflow and therefore help with keeping components nice and cool. As such, they tend to be more specialist and can cost a bit more. Those small metal latches aren't really important. What is important is that the cable you use has a right angle connection on one end and is straight on the other. This is so that the end of the cable that plugs into the motherboard sits neatly under the Blu-ray drive when that gets reinstalled. Importante, definitely make sure it's not a left angle cable because that'll be even more difficult to plug into the motherboard. This wider cable right here is a SATA power extension cable, also used in PCs, also cheap. I bought a pack of three on Amazon for £5.95, that's about $7.51 US right now. Out of the packaging, this cable won't fit where we need it to on the Xbox drive connector because of this little plastic tab on the side, so we need to remove that. It's the tab on the same side as the right angled kink. If yours doesn't have a tab, then you obviously don't need to worry about this, but if it does, removing it is easy to do and doesn't actually require the ridiculously large knife I used. This is just the only one I had to hand, don't ask why. Just slot it in here and pull the tab off, and that's it. There's still a bit of a plastic nub left, and even though this is good enough for the cable to fit comfortably, I'm an awkward dude, so I chose to file it down for the perfect fit. Now we're going to put all four parts together, but you'll have to bear with me as it might look a bit unwieldy. We're starting with the old drive connector and we're going to plug in the male end of the power extension cable. That's the end we remove the tab from and has the metal contacts exposed. The other end plugs into the drive you're using and that's the power part done. Again, the wider power cable plugs into the wider power port on the drive. Next, we need to do the data part, so we take the SATA data cable and plug the straight end into the drive right next to the power cable. Then we're going to go back to the Xbox. Plug the other end of the SATA data cable directly into the data port on the motherboard right here. Now take the small power cable on the original hard drive connector and plug that into its normal white slot next to the data port. The rest of the connector is just kind of left awkwardly hanging. As it is now, the console would be difficult to close and airflow would probably be compromised, so I'll show you how I dealt with that in a bit. While we test this method to make sure it works, I'm just going to leave the drive and cables awkwardly hanging out because, well, just because. And I'll show you how to deal with that after. And fast forward through the green screen because, spoiler alert, it works. Champions. So the console works and that's great. 
What isn't great is that its insides are hanging out like a bloody crime scene, so we need to clean this up. The combination of cables we're using takes up more space than the original connector did, even if we use the shortest ones we can find, so we need to try and reclaim some. To do that, we're going to remove the data part of the original drive connector entirely. It doesn't work anymore and it takes up space, so just get rid. We're also going to remove the little nubs that stick out because they're not needed anymore either. Take this little cap off the connector. It's held on with teeny tiny little tab hooks and they're easy to remove. Then unfold the data cable so that it sticks out like this. Unfortunately, I didn't record footage of myself cleaving the connector in two with a hacksaw, and I actually did that, but here's what it looks like when it's done. When you're cutting, try to cut more on the faulty data port side so you don't risk messing up any of the important power contacts. This is what you should end up with on the power side. I haven't removed the nub on this side just yet, but that's easily done. And this is what you'll end up with on the data port side that you're going to throw away. So putting it all together in a way that we can close up the console. This is going to take some finessing, but it's not too difficult. We just need to basically maneuver the cables in a way so that they fit nicely within the packaging without obstructing airflow. The best place I've found for this is between the hard drive and Blu-ray drive. If you do it right, air can still flow between the two, around, above and below. First, we'll put the drive in its normal place, like so. Then maneuver the data cable so that you get this tiny loop at the bottom and it goes straight up to the data port as you can see here. Now take the power section, with the nub removed, place the extensions wires over the hard drive and plug the power connection into the white power port like so. Then put the rest of the power section right here, but keep your finger on it to hold it in place for the next part. Using your fingers to hold down the data cable loop and the power cable, gently lower the Blu-ray drive back down so that it encloses everything securely. The Blu-ray drive should sit comfortably in its normal place and shouldn't wobble. If it does wobble, just lift it up and try repositioning the cables again. And that's it. You can close the system back up, reassemble, and you're done. So I hope you found this guide useful. I've had a surprising amount of fun making it, so I may make some more if something else needs to be said. Uh, thanks for watching, and I wish you all the best. As I awkwardly control this game with only one hand. <laughs>